Oops. Okay. So recording this. Um, you're, are you still in high school, Eric? Uh, long, complicated story we should talk about over building a life track sometime, but odd in between uni and Holly High School. Between university and high school? Somewhere? So I did a little bit of university, but ADHD and university do not mix. What? Huh. How old are you? 19 right now. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Well, let's um let's get going. See if the other people uh, show up. Definitely, Josh. Oh, Josh has got to be here. He's he's from 180 Degree Consulting. And he wants to help out for the summer on some of the marketing work. So it would be good if he, he showed up here. I did get a little bit of feedback from Emily Aiken, who's a media advisor for us, actually. Um, so I'm going to post this. Let me just put it at the 180 degree consulting page. On the note of advertising, one issue. We were discussing it a bit in the Slack, but the Slack's kind of underused in my opinion, but getting more people on either the Slack, Discord, or both, mainly just for real-time chats, so we're all on the same page. Yeah, I, I think that it's a problem that we now have both Discord and Slack because we don't have such a big user base and then people, it's better if we have one place there where we funnel people. Um, so yeah, I, I saw that we have Discord now as well. Um, so it's probably better if Discord is better, then maybe we should yeah. just on turn that on note, Slack. But there's already a lot of people who have joined Slack through the link. Um, of course, yeah, we can gonna, have... Can I kind of continue on that note, I guess? Um, it's kind of odd. The Slack is great and it has lots of people, but it's not very used. So I think it could be used well as for like business announcements for the type of people that don't want all the chat clutter, but want like the TLDR. And then we use the Discord solely for the chat and all the nonsense. So we kind of separate the two. I know Nexus Space is having a huge debate about how to manage that. Like some people are like constant chat, and then some people want only TLDR. So I think making both may be useful. Well, for new people, that's the best experience. I mean, you can have a, you can have a channel, which is announcements, and then you can have um, like chats just between people in groups. Where yeah, you they're trying that too with the general channel. They have like a channel just for general chat. But the problem I had was for individual developments, they had a project. So for biopetrochemistry, biopetrochemistry, for instance, they had a channel, but they locked it to only TLDR. So if I want to say something like, oh, hey, what if we use algae? I can only say that in the general chat. Thus, the general chat gets clogged. But we can also just do that in Discord, i.e. have dual channels for every single subject, which is work to make, but saves time. Also, by having the OSD social media page as a land here page, they should be able to find everything relatively easy, at least in my opinion. What do you think about that? So do you mean to have two channels for each topic, basically? Um, yeah, it's that probably even, better in written form. Even much, even it's more. probably easier to understand a written form. My speaking isn't exactly clear usually, but um, there are lots of ways we can do it. But I think one of the ultimate solutions is having very clear land here pages on both the wiki and every other OSC page. So the moment you come across, even if you accidentally type the wrong link, you can immediately figure out where to go, what to see, what OSC is. Yeah, for Wikipedia, I, I totally agree on that part. It's good to have like clear portals everywhere or I think kind of made a start here category. It's kind of half-baked right now, but that's in the works somewhere. Also, I've been trying to do a pile of interlinking, so every page is linked to other pages and has construction sets linking to that page. Hey, With the 90s technology, it's kind hey, of hard at times, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there are a lot of people who use Discourse, like from our open source ecology. Oh yeah, I think it's, I am hard, it's hard to say because I'm the young teenager not in the huge business world, so I'm biased in that manner. But I would say Discord is more popular for lots of amount of people. So in just the few days I've used it, I think I may have hooked a few people. And I'm 
precious plastic as a good industry standard. They use it like crazy and have like 3,000 people in like five languages to the point where I'm trying to learn Spanish better. <laughs> I mean, from uh, our, because like, yeah, if you look in businesses, then it's like, it's, it's much more common. Um, but yeah, that, that's the thing that, though. Uh, for open source ecology, are there other people except you who, uh, and... Yeah, I fully uh, agree on that. Businesses are another big target area, so that's why I think it's good to have both. So you don't annoy the business people, but you don't scare off the people that are just like fanboys and whatnot. Okay, let's yeah. let's continue with yeah, the meeting. Let's yeah. can you guys resolve that um, offline? Can you find it out? Yeah, definitely. No, okay. we can make. I can make a wiki page and yell okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. So uh, on the agenda today, so we have Josh from 180 DC. Welcome, Josh. Thanks for uh, working on the report. And I'm actually gonna. Oh yeah, there's Joe. I'm gonna put in a link to the. Let's take a look at the final report everybody who if you haven't seen I put on the wiki so here's the link uh, there's also some feedback I already got from um, so Emily Aiken she's from the story studio.com she's a market person marketing person branding person she can give some comments if you want to take a look at that link um, but yeah let's talk about what to make out of it all and and how to go forward and see what Josh what you can help us with uh, Josh which part of the the report just to remind us you worked on so maybe uh, feed, feedback here yeah so I was on mostly the the organic marketing side as well as the podcast but then I don't know I was also hopping around just like helping out everyone with either like the partnerships aspect of it yeah but I the branches I was not able to work on was the SEO and the paid paid uh, social medias yeah yeah. Um, Joe and Andreas, did you guys have a chance to look at the uh, report a little bit? Or? I'm pretty bad with skimming a lot of the things, and I'm not the marketing expert, but what I would say is they really need to focus on all the search optimization and all those really technical things that they learn. I think we kind of have networking on like Discord and social media conquered, we just need to dive in more to editing video and kind of publishing more. But I think that part is kind of a big unknown is all the how do we ethically exploit Google. Yeah. So maybe before we go further, so since this is around uh, basically discussion around Steam Camp marketing and which also relates to sales of 3D printers and other things. Um, but right now we're looking at September for a steam camp that's a remote thing and we talked about the curriculum for it and it's kind of like it's a little different than this long-term marketing plan that we can come up with like with the 180 DC report which was designed for like six months assuming six to twelve months or so um, but in the meantime we can also look at what can we do right now as we prepare and I was also thinking um, of another concept so so we have the steam camp but the thing that altogether just kind of frame this project in a historical perspective is that while we got really good at ex what, what we defined as extreme manufacturing, uh, the thing we haven't gotten good at is the extreme enterprise, which I now bring that to the fore as extreme enterprise, which is the idea that, well, if we can build things, why aren't we selling things? Or why isn't the open source community growing in terms of that becoming a, a veritable uh, economic force just like open source software and it has in some way like 3d printers basically took over and they they are part of the open source hardware world but altogether yeah. it's quite negligible for as far as you know nobody has heard of open source hardware I... and it's a b big gap altogether in the community so so maybe as we go forward we have a very clear in mind that our next problem that we're trying to solve for is okay if we can produce things like the weekend build where we produce a tractor or a dozen printers well why can't we build replicable enterprise models to go with that and that that's a really good question we should be asking ourselves because yeah I agree that's like the key missing point precious plastic too precious plastic is absolutely terrible with conferences I've been essentially spamming, almost not spamming, but saying every few days or so in the business section 
like, hey, we should figure out how to do door-to-door -door collection. That is a legitimate service, especially in suburbs, where you could earn a lot of money with, like, the bicycle mailman, but for recycling, where they go out on their little bicycle or um, open source pedal vehicle or whatever, they collect all the recycling, they take it to the precious plastic work space or maker space so they can make money off of it. Like, that's a profit source, in my opinion. Then, on another three-minute rant on relevant local stuff, I might be able to do with funds. I'm looking into if my library has a makerspace because the other day Marson or someone posted that and was like, hey, libraries have makerspaces. And I looked and mine didn't. And I was like, wait a minute. So okay. I might be able to do that. Main thing is networking and funds, which I'm still looking into. Final so bit, I can definitely dive into making an official OSC YouTube channel. I know how to edit video well in Blender. I have a decent eye with camera, at least in my biased opinion. I did a photo slash video class in high school. Which, granted, that's stereotypical, like, hey, oh, I have a film expert, but I might be able to do that. So that's my rant. Uh, do you have, uh, well, that's that's relevant. Uh, do you have experience with, like, the open source tool chains that everyone has access to, such as Caden Live or other? Yeah, yeah, Blender is very open source and cannot okay. only be used for animation, but for really high level, like, Adobe Premiere oh, yeah. level video. Oh, yeah, it's, it's all there. So, so thinking it can about do the. Everything. Okay, so let's return back to the September Steam Camp. I'm thinking that we do the... We, right now, Andres, we're talking about something like a four-day event. Yeah. And um, so, so let's take a look at it. What if, what if we do like a four-day, and then on a Friday, we focus on this extreme enterprise thing? That means leading up to the event, we make... A very deliberate attempt at bringing in all the people that are required to uh, produce one product that's actually like we're focusing on deploying an enterprise so that means uh, including a website and a product that can actually be sold so there's many products out there that we can pick from like I was thinking actually of perhaps the open source 3d printed electric motor as a small Definitely. enough thing that's that a got a big market of precious plastic that is like a need because the machines are cheap short of the 10 horsepower or one horsepower motor right if we can make an open source one with the motor diy windings and a 3d yeah. printed to metal or a single gearbox if we could make that and get it maybe a hundred or five hundred dollars versus the thousands that would explode yeah. all of the shredders all of the extruders all the industrial drill machinery yeah, uh, I think an electric motor is a good candidate, but the idea there is the collaboration architecture. The thing like with the extreme manufacturing, there's roles. You have breakdown of the task into modules, and then you assemble things rapidly into place. And then we can apply those kinds of techniques towards the enterprise level. So that means your marketing, your product, product brochures, your production, your quality control, like all those aspects and bring specific people to the team uh, to that event and I'm thinking like a weekend like a week like kind of a, the style of a hackathon slash startup camp that happens over a weekend maybe what do you guys think like after the steam camp do one of these things and and try to really nail the enterprise because the thing that we want to do right now for the steam camp is the idea of okay now we're getting to production say of the COVID equipment like personal protective equipment that's something yeah, we can do that, I don't want to overstate because there are no confirms yet, as I still was planning on doing all the networking today and even go in person and ask the librarians. But Florida, especially my area, Fleming Island slash Orange Park slash Clay County, has barely had any COVID cases and they've all been in nursing homes. Granted, the government has been idiots and been like, hey, what if we open up completely and definitely don't have a second wave? What could go wrong? But assuming we're still good for the next two weeks, or so, I mean, no second curve. I could maybe have an in-person one. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Um, some some thoughts on, on the curriculum. Um, so the four days events. I'm, I'm thinking both like reading what what Josh and the other team wrote about like making it accessible for as many as possible, and also rethinking one more iteration in terms of of making a good experience. Um, I'm still leaning towards having a bit fewer products and a bit higher quality for, for people who come there and then putting in some TPE. Um, so I remade one suggest another suggestion for a, a Steam camp, which would be six days, but it would run on 
free weekends so people can still have their, their uh, out, yeah. normal jobs but they would be able to come every second weekends for example so the first weekend cool. would be a 3d printer then they would do some free CAD and print some masks so they would already start using what they learned the first weekend uh, and that's then second weekend they would doing the filament instead of the shredder first um, so they can already maybe maybe they can cut with a scissor or something like just something to, to, to get started because if they, if they build the shredder first they still kind of need a filament maker in order for it to be useful uh, and then on so the Sunday there we, we can have some other things on it and then on weekend free they would do the shredder so if filament you, maker with then, purchased or otherwise sourced uh, granules no uh, I stay liming in the shredder that's something so, I've been really trying to hype up precious plastic because if they're trying to make money off selling rolls that you can get at Walmart, which no one outside of a third world country would buy. But if they could make reliable 3D printing and make like really crazy 3D printing artsy shit or be able to make like complex things that can only be made with 3D printing, imagine the money for like print farms. Like they're trying to sell molds and I'm like, why not print farms? <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree with that critique. Yeah. That's that's I think valid because they're they're not focusing on three D printers at all, which I think is a total gap in their yeah their thing. Um, so but either that they send either if it's on place, then we can bring some shredded parts already if we already have a shredder. But yeah. otherwise, they they can, you buy, can some buy granular or we send it as a part of the package. You can buy like one metric we ton pre for we prepare it for them so they can use it already. It's like a metric ton of PLA. So I'm on page number 11, and this is where I put up the, the oh, okay, new yeah, proposition. I need to read all the manual. <laughs> um, and then in the last page... Uh, let's see. Which... Yeah. Okay, okay, in the doc, page 11. Okay. Yeah. Um, and maybe... So it's a little bit more space in between. So for example, if the 3D printer fails, they also will have a little bit of space on Sunday to troubleshoot, and it's the same on the second weekend if the filament is the same fails then they have uh, a little bit of troubleshooting time for, for Sunday uh, and mm -hmm. such same thing on, on the last weekend okay uh, but focus is there that each weekend would be useful for them so they already do something and maybe we can add either add one module to it or we include it on the Sunday parts uh, the entrepreneurship basically this is just one yeah idea. yeah yeah okay um so the difference is I took away from that basically. So quick Alibaba, Alibaba search said about two dollars a kilogram for yeah, a dollar EBS, a pound. And that's at a kilogram. Yeah, those the prices are definitely affordable. Uh, so maybe let's um, let's see. Um, so if we review kind of the so let's let's kind of step back to the marketing plan unless so Andreas so uh, what else should we talk about? I mean, do you want to continue on uh, the curriculum, or should we no, dive into? No, I think the marketing plan and, and budget overall. Um, how much time the marketing plan would take, and basically how much we need to, how much we need to earn, because in the end we need to make ends meet. Uh, right. So I looked on the marketing plan that you sent. Um, I did a short, like very. Let me cover that one in here. Um, very short notes regarding how many participants we need and such because if we have on that plan there were uh, let's see 1781 hours which is basically almost one year full time like 44 weeks or something like that plus 10,000 in US dollars um, and then if it would be for example if it would be uh, three full time people then would need to have a profit of 167,000 US dollars, um, and then we need to split it with, with the instructors. So, yes, so, um, so like the pricing, we need to decide how how big is the core team, and then develop the pricing based on on that. Um, so we don't, so we, yeah, just to make it financial right. stable, basically. So this is discussion which might be worth having. So to continue my bit on a potential local stuff, first off, sorry for my internet going in and out. Comcast is absolutely terrible. Would not recommend. Don't use them. Anyhow, um, I'm trying to network, but I have an elementary school and a high school like within biking distance, both with really good funds because that sweet, sweet suburb money. So assuming I can look nice enough, I might be able to get funding. Also, the local library is within biking distance. 
And because of COVID, I am sort of able to do full time. And I'm also plotting a photography business and stuff like that. So I might actually be able to continue doing full time. So today through the rest of the week, I'm going to try and finish networking with those local groups and see what I can do. But I fully agree with Andreas that the clubs are much more easily doable than a single day or single weekend event, especially with the working class people that may be interested. Like if someone's welding and doing two jobs a day, they may not have time to randomly choose a weekend to take off. But if it's a club that happens every week for 10 years, they could at least make one. And also by going to libraries and schools, we can get a lot of people, especially if we use the words STEM, as those are like buzzwords in education. So you say one of those and they just throw money at you kind of. So I mean, and especially, I mentioned this earlier somewhere, if we have a drop kit, like they don't have to do any work including the teachers short of the teaching. Because my mom's a teacher and um, lesson planning and grading is two thirds of the work. If we can make the lesson plan and automate the grading, you make the life way easier and the product way more attractive. So that's kind of my next bit, I guess. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, wrapping that up, let's, so let's go talk about the, the, num the numbers for the STEAM camp. Um, so, yeah. Josh, maybe, maybe we could, like, like the thing that I, I observed, like, if, if you just look at the numbers within uh, the proposal of the, the final report, we've got, like, if you actually count the time, I think it's it looks like 167 like if I divided like the actual cost if you actually pay somebody to do that uh, it would be like hundred sixty seven dollars per person co cost of customer acquisition some of that would be my time like like the, the the thing to do is think about okay what effort do we have from each person so for me I, I I'd really love to get into the so there's the podcast that I that's definitely on my radar and also the so the university uh, visits to universities or talks Definitely. there um, and then th so then therefore the partnership building where we can kick off the efforts at like as, as in the OSC clubs or chapters at universities um, and then like the the classroom initiative like the potentially with high schools because because actually this one guy um, uh, is in inviting me to this National Association of Independent Schools conference that will be next year we're looking at presenting there next year so the idea being like okay all the time it's about ta getting enough bodies to show up so that we have enough people that the products are actually better that's i think been the the shortcoming the idea that one it's hard to get the people and it's hard to retain people because you got to get the financial feedback loops right so so that the schools could be a way where we're integrating the education in that um and some of the other products like the steam camps or teaching teachers how to do steam camps. so definitely like the partnerships there um, and talks at universities, uh, allied organizations. That, that partnership building is a big deal, and I, c I can do that. And like like on the podcast, yeah, if there could be either like as as an invited guest or just starting our own, where we basically, along the lines of collaboration, reach out to all the people who who are helping out, helping in a big vision of the open source economy, making that a real thing. Uh, so all the leading efforts from the open source hardware projects and other related efforts like precious plastic and whatever uh, we've got there. Uh, but with that said, um, I was maybe like to look at the marketing plan and take a look at is does the is the is the pretty much a package deal or can we say okay there's a few things like for example I remember the the Facebook marketing was like cost of customer acquisition was like fifty bucks. Well, what if that could be the 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 low hanging fruit, yeah. or do we have to do all the other steps to really make that part work? What, what do you think? Note of cost. I don't know if you saw the part, but last night I like randomly was thinking about books mainly because of all my personal rants recently. So I saw the OSC book, and I don't know if that's finished yet. Like what stage? No, no, it's, it's kind of like yeah, probably note. very early, and of course it would need to be peer reviewed and all that. But I was looking into Amazon publishing. Because Amazon, you can publish for free. So on one hand, fully libre, open source, nerdery. And on the other hand, people could grab it for free. I you not have to waste money on something they don't know is good. So if they're bored one day sitting around, and then they grab a book, and next thing you know, we got another developer. So I think that may have been 
that would probably be one to two years in the future, I bet, given how long it takes to write books, but that's a good thing to push for long term. I think short term, the podcast, a dedicated YouTube channel, and better graphic design is probably the easiest deliverables, and then let the professionals work on all the search engine optimization and management, i.e. not armchair me. And then um, I can do a podcast, but I have really bad mics, i.e. just like the webcams and whatnot. I have decent cameras with like relatively new smartphones, but I may be buying one recently to, if I start up a company, so I don't know on all that. I'll get back to you on deliverables in maybe three days or so. Okay, that sounds good. Josh? Uh, yeah, Martin. So on the report, I will say that like all the branches, we kind of we kind of pitched to you guys as like a pitch, you know, and then it seems like you already kind of have a prioritization of what you want to do. Uh, I definitely think, yes, yeah, start up the podcast. I know in the report, we definitely just said like guest appearances because that kind of reaches a new audience, which could, I think definitely. like guest appearances, you like reach new people who might not have heard of OSC, where if you start a podcast, you're kind of hitting already, like that's more the retention aspect. Yeah. yeah I, have a, and then, I have a question on how to actually do that because I've tried to contact YouTube channels, but I'm running into the problem of sounding like a Nigerian prince asking for a loan and social security money. Like, if I'm a small person with no subscribers and no following, how do I act like I actually am meaning real business and be professional as I'm a small child that does not know that? Yeah, I think like. There's usually a contact email, and like you could definitely get lost in those emails, especially yeah. like podcasts or channels. I think that's where it's nice if it's credible coming from like yeah, the OSC YouTube, YouTube page, channel, like, yeah, the OSC podcast, YouTube yeah. or like the Facebook or something. If it's coming from something that has a lot of followers, that can add the credibility as well as like a nice, well-written like proposal to like get on that YouTube channel. Um, Do we have a hard number on pseudo bot followers, like all the devs and people that are basically guaranteed votes, kind of like skewing the system, but semi ethically? <laughs> I think I had a word for that. It was like semi morally questionable marketing or something, but not really. Because um, let's think here: we have five people here, but we have maybe twenty people on the Slack. Is that accurate? Yeah. Varying activity, but around 20 people, maybe, yeah. estimate. Yeah, maybe tomorrow, yeah. And then I think I just got three new people from Precious Plastic on the Discord. So that's, what, like, around 30, maybe? So not much, but given that there are channels... Well, I mean, you have to start somewhere. And also, another thing, I don't know if you saw this in the news, but the Sketchy Kids YouTube, basically some people in China figured out how to, like, engineer the algorithm. So they were just putting like XD compilation cat videos and like all of that in this huge string of a title and it like was re recommended everywhere even though it was bot generated garbage so of course we would not want to do that but I bet the experts probably know somewhat similar stuff where if you use a keyword you'll kind of be chosen by the bot gods and suddenly explode okay uh, Josh you were saying uh, yeah, I was also going to say something on the uh, on the aspect of the Facebook side that you were talking about, like the $50 per customer. I would definitely, um, even just coming from 180, I'd definitely be cautious of that number. I think I had some arguments and debates with the team about that number because you know that we were telling you on the cost that they're pretty much like estimates. You know, we're trying to get you the average estimate per customer. So there's like percentages that are you have to take into account and I personally want to go with lower percentages because just seeing other recommendations we've done with like uh, nonprofits in the past we have never seen that high of outcome in a Facebook marketing like page so is, is this on um, money spent on marketing or money from part from products this is that'd be like that would that'd be 50 bucks spent on Facebook marketing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do we have like I know when you're doing research projects like for high school or whatever, you're like, oh, I have this much money from the person giving me the giant check. Do we have that yet? Because I know we're already pretty much pitching pennies, which is why we're trying to do all this. But do we have from what was it like the Patreon and all that some sort of sum we're willing to burn before we dive into all this? This is part of the 
larger discussion what exactly yeah, so we're do we still want figuring to that do. out okay um, so fifty dollars yeah. was like the proposed one uh, yeah, read the, so you gotta read the, the final report, the, the <laughs> Read whole, the fucking manual, yeah. So the 180DC report goes through all the, the costs related to the different branches of all the, all the marketing that we Is can that do. Is that a Google Doc? Let me do. So it's in the chat box, so you can take a look at that. Alright, you'll grab that. 180. Uh, yeah. Do you have any idea of how big difference uh, the conversion rate is compared to what you have? Is it like 10 times worse or twice as, as bad, approximately, yeah. if you guess? On the, uh, on the Facebook side? Yeah. Um, honestly, I never, I, mean, looked in, I never did like the actual research into the numbers, but then uh, Matthew is coming up with like a percentage of 5% conversion once you narrow down the target market. But I still think even then that's kind of hard to just like assume, you know, you always want to take a yeah. lower estimate toward like one percentage to like in, just be in your, safe. Yeah. In your experience with other groups and like actually doing this as a job, not armchair, how much can you do for free? I know you get what you pay for, but is outside of maybe servers and big stuff, is running a YouTube channel free? And I think podcast publishing is free. Hmm. So I have a crappy mic but I know how to edit sound and video and I may buy equipment soon. Yet again, no deliverables, no deliverables, so don't trust me, but I could manage that kind of and I have time to burn because shelter in place and all that. So I can kind of sit here and turn so, out videos all day. If need so let's hear from Joe. Joe, what are you, Joe, you're talking a lot about um, low access barriers to what are the low hanging fruits here? What are your thoughts on it, um, Joe? I think right away, if we're going to talk about any new content for YouTube, if you go to YouTube and search open source ecology, uh, we arrive at your YouTube channel. There's a lot of good talks and things. If we go and look at the videos, whoops, 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 there we go. If we go and look at the videos and playlists, um, there's a lot of concept videos. There's a lot of meeting stuff put together. If we focused on making a channel that was very low skill or something if you guys are talking about <laughs> yeah. doing something new for there make something that shows beginners that they're capable of I fully doing agree. some of these other more advanced projects um, I think creating that that sort of uh, that sort of landing place and then directing the social media towards that makes it easier. Makes it easier to get in. You know what I mean? We make the shallow side of the pool shallower. Yeah, so absolutely. That people can wade in. People wade in when they come to see us. I, I and think. Oh, I, I want to do two deliverables and maybe make sprints for them whenever you all are available. <laughs> Speaking no available. We need to get time zone rules because I'm Eastern. Marchin is what like middle of America. I don't know where everyone else is, so I don't want to tell you to have a conference in the middle of the night my dad did that with the navy and all that so no that's terrible but um anyhow the deliverables should be get the youtube channel and the podcast going and then get the land here pages and category all set up so that it's like old text middle of the wiki middle of the so like you said shallow and shallow oh and also like we're all kind of github types but there are also the people that like the shiny Apple web design. So I think we need to appeal to both. Like half the GitHub for the GitHub people, half the shiny Apple, tons of animations, 2010s style website as well. Joe, can you paste that link in again? I'm not able to access that. Somehow, sometimes it turns up as a clickable link, other times it just, I can't do anything with it. Yeah, let me get to the home page on that. See what's going on with that. Yeah, it's weird. It's. Do, do you guys have the same thing? Like sometimes a link appears on clickable, but other times it just to it's totally grayed out and I can't even copy and paste? Is it like yeah. the weird control click thing? Or I don't know, there's all sorts of weird stuff. Like YouTube, you can really easily mess up by note with like time codes and all sorts control of stuff. Control C. So, is it better to make a new YouTube channel or remake the one which already exists? No, I, I thoroughly agree. Make a new one. Archon, keep yours. It's great. It's a good developer channel. I say we make one named like Open Source Ecology Main. Because, I mean, 
Precious Plastic has the same exact issue that's also causing trouble, where it's David Hackens as the YouTube channel, so it's confusing, because you look up Precious Plastic and nothing's there, then you look up David Hackens and it's basically the official channel, but as an off-the-shelf example, Precious Plastic is basically goals for what I think the channel should be. It's like very artistic and all like poppy and fun for all the people, which is probably why they Sorry, I'm back. Um, okay, so a new YouTube channel maybe is better than, than repurposing the existing one. I've made like armchair. I would gladly leave this to the um, people actually doing this for a job. I don't want to step on toes and all that, but some goofy group I made for yelling at soapbox creatures at UNF because they were annoying me and our friends. <laughs> no, I legit made an organization and a, like a, not a YouTube page, but. Um, like a Discord kind of thing and a Gmail for like, like, like we had it like full on organized. I was like unionizing the people against Soapbox guys. So if everyone else is busy, I can burn time on that. Otherwise, I say we set a design sprint and have all the pros do that. Maybe Saturday, Sunday, or in a week or two. How does that sound? Don't know yet. Um, let's see. So what else is uh, on the plate here? Um, so youtube channel for the youtube channel i think okay so let's talk about the content that exists like if you if you look at the channel starting like back um, oldest videos like 2000 probably eight but there's a lot of stuff like right now the last few years has been a lot of recording of meetings with in, interspersed with a few high quality videos um there's a lot of stuff like, so in the report um uh, in the 180 dc report we're saying take little clips and like just search all the videos and and make useful content out of them because there's also a bunch of un unprocessed videos like for example we did this major oh, yeah. as an example one that just be a prototypical kind of a thing there's an excellent amount of footage on the nut plant out and there's a whole story yeah, behind uh -huh. it was but, that a GoPro? That was great. I watched that a year ago or something. Was that GoPro or was that a cell phone? No, that was a cell phone. Um, okay, no, so... So, um, I so stuff like that. On this video. So, number one, I think you should get a GoPro or a DJI clone, which is actually better. It would be an investment, but you could literally throw that in the mud next to a life track and get some really good footage, and you can mount them all over the place. Yeah. So that's good for... I think what your job will be is get all the source footage. So you need to do no editing, just take piles of videos of... Well, that's already there. I don't, I don't have anything oh, yeah, to... yeah, exactly. It's, it's, all, it's all up there, so we got to work from it. Yeah, no, exactly. The 2018 or so was back when we basically did what Precious Plastic does. I posted a link to one of their videos, just a random one that popped up in the chat, and that's kind of the style I think we should go for. They also do a really interesting thing where they do a monthly news dump, kind of like PR, just, hey, this is all that's happened in the month, all our deliverables, which one, it's not entirely necessary, but think about the YouTube algorithm, double check with the experts, but from what I've heard from people complaining about it on YouTube, it prefers rapid uploads. So if you do like a massive video essay every month, not every month, like every year, and it's like the best video ever, doesn't care and the bot god condemn you to hell but if you make like list videos like 10 times yeah, yeah. a day the bot loves you so i think the compromise is we have the dev channel with the really in-depth three-hour videos then you make source footage i and the we can make a dedicated on the channel for slack and discord for sharing files and talking as we edit in blender in the common workflow we take your source footage and stock images and we make it into super polished, fancy, hipster friendly, just like the precious plastic kind of stuff. Also look up Nexus Base. They're really odd. I don't know how I feel about them, but they're obscenely good at networking, even more so than precious plastic. So kind of their work, I guess. 
So regarding the content, so there's the YouTube channel, there's actually a Vimeo channel, there's uh, good videos linked to actually on our main website, and there's also Do the high resolution GVCS media page on the wiki, which has, I mean, wow. it's got tons of footage. So, so it's like, I'm done with that. Like somebody can, who, who can edit, yeah. And also that I plus taking the CAD and putting it into Blender and making animations out of that, that's like, that you can just do that all day if we had the people so to I do that. I start doing that as an overhold. Do we have a Google folder at all that might be more user friendly, albeit less open source than the wiki for like file moving? Like if I'm moving like five stock images or like text with, um, what's the word for this? Well, as but far yeah, as sharing, I mean, shared shared folders on on Google work perfectly fine. Want, on another note, do we want an official OSC central email so we can have multiple people doing admin? Like, if if someone's on the opposite side of the world, so you're sleeping, having a good time, but this person needs to know how to fix their life track. Do we want to make a central email with multiple access? How secure is that? How do we go out? Nah, not that? We have got some positional emails. That's that's like uh, that depends on a role. Yeah, we don't really have the people to manage that yeah, right now, but we do have positional. Well, I think that, especially as we get more people, and more users, and more people not knowing how to run OSD Linux. Like, how do I open Google Chrome? And you're like, you click the thing, but. We will need a service for that. I'm kind of doing that on Precious Plastic, but it's still a mess. Also, translators. I'm trying to get, I'm hyping up to uh, open source Google Translate and also sign language and all that crap. I'm trying to hype it up. Some of it exists. It just needs to be merged into a drop kit, like, like two thirds of open source stuff. It's all out there. It's just hurting cats. But if we could get that going, it would make networking way easier. Because, for instance, I can't speak Chinese. But there are a pile of people in China to help with us, so if we can bridge that divide, get a pile of developers. Or like there was a guy from Japan I was trying to talk with, and I mean, he was really good at English, but I know I don't even know how to type the characters that have them on my keyboard. So that's a huge disconnect. That's good. All right, for let's get some uh, overview of everything we need to do, so we don't go into all details for everything. Because so we have the curriculum uh, thing up. Budget and product development. Yep. So, if we focus for the marketing, like what are the most important things, and both like in terms of rate of investment, but also in terms of easy access. For example, we have the SEO. So, I'm thinking especially f uh, to you, Josh. Um, so, we talked about po podcast, YouTube uh, videos, Facebook, and I guess also SEO is something which we can do once and then like fly on it for a while. Um, do you have any other recommendations of if, if we focus our time on this thing, w which are the most important ones? Anything we missed? Uh, yeah, so I think from what I've collected today, it just seems like, like yeah, the funds are kind of tight, so maybe just focus on the, the marketing strategies that are pretty much just like time, effort, and low cost. So yeah, I guess just keeping going on the social medias. Uh, the two pathways you could have gone with the YouTube is either rebrand the YouTube or go with the new one. It seems like you guys want to go with the new one, so that's something. I say new. We don't kill Martians channel. I don't know how do you feel about that. I don't know. I don't want to like rebrand and like retcon your entire work. So I think it might be good just to start anew, and then there's no confusion. I don't know how. Like, do we do that or what's the deal? So is it Facebook posts that are you mean also as well? Both okay, Facebook but let's, let's advertisements let's and Facebook posts. I say we make a central Gmail, not the customer service one, but just one for building accounts, like open source ecology dot Gmail, and then we have open source ecology customer service dot Gmail. We make two of those. We use the non customer service one for making all the accounts and the customer service and all the mentions. Okay, but like hold on a second, one. Eric. Let's let's have uh, Josh just kill the yeah, off the. Yeah, definitely. Let him chime in. I'm on <laughs> The the concept of what what all do you think is the highest priority at this point and because the other question well, is since you're you're willing to do some so like regarding your involvement how much time would you have through the summer so so you can do do some work on this um, as of now i'm at shelter in place relatively so I eric i was asking josh josh 
Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, goodness, sorry. Josh. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to work like this and another job this summer, but I'm willing to put like 15, 20 hours a week into OSCE and just like honestly help out wherever you guys need me. Um, in terms of like what we discussed kind of throughout the last few months, like just developing OSC's online presence all should be leading up into like utilizing that $10,000 you have toward the SEO. So I remember you mentioned that and that's like a really powerful thing that can like really flip the switch for you guys. And I think you guys just need to make sure so far right now that the online presence is strong so that when the SEOs start before and put into place, then the people have stuff to like click through and look at. So you're saying build it up and then we're kicking in the $10,000 that we have free from Google Ad Grants? Yeah. Yeah, like don't like rock it before it's built kind of a deal. On the note of your time being way more valuable mm. than mine, I can basically be the grunt. Like you all come up with the what to do and the how to do it, and then throw the files at me. I process the files, spit out the yeah. page. Then you have to make sure it's proper to like actual non armchair spec, and then we keep that loop going, which is especially easier with all the slack and um, Discord versus me spamming marching with like fifty emails and blocking up and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, Josh. As far as um, the kind of stuff that you can do, uh, so what would what would be the next steps for you? Like, what what can you take on? Yeah. So I'm. I in the past I've been more experienced on like a research side of teams, but if you guys need me to run any type of like front end media, I can help out on that. If you need me to do more research into like starting a podcast or getting on guest appearances, I can do that. Yeah, but definitely. Like, getting into um, partnerships, I can look into that as well. So, um, I think you did white papers, right? You had like some white papers in the Google Docs. I skipped them or didn't read them, but you had like, hey, how to market, and like the the one I'm reading right now. So I think that is absolutely what you do. Also, because I am completely incapable of doing it due to being a small fish, and you are like actual marketing company, could you contact? I made pages for them, I think, but like tested and Scientific and um, Marco reps and basically all of tech YouTube, especially if we could get a really solid deep 3D printer to send out to all the 3D printing channels, bring all the knowledge I have on 3D printers is from those and like there have been huge Kickstarters because of them. So first we want to make sure it's up to spec. We don't want to get bad PR from a failed review. But once we get it up to spec and we get a pitch and a drop kit and we send them a single printer to one of the major channels with proper networking, I think that would be huge. That's doable. Joe, uh, what are your thoughts? I think uh, as far as podcasts and YouTube, you know, our own stuff is going to be a slow build. Uh, getting those guest spots on other podcasts, uh, doing partnerships with other YouTube channels that are well established is a really is a really good first step, and it's a cheap step. Um, Josh, I've been doing a little bit of research to that effect myself. If uh, you and I start up a page for that process, link. placeholder by me not good but the SME page I made like a crappy template you can try that and like really flesh that page out and then the other aspect to touch on for um, contacting actual people they have money to burn we don't have money to burn or experience but we have tech they have money to burn and um, exposure so we can kind of do a trade where they're fighting running out of project we're Sorry, fighting Harry. running out of money Joe I think you were saying something Oh, were you doing, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, great. Um, sorry, yeah, um, and we have a, a, a marketing page also. Maybe Joe and Josh and me, we can uh, look at something together, like writing down policy on, for example, if we have a checklist on how often do we post on Facebook, yeah, maybe Joe can help writing some kind of layouts that other people can fill in. Uh, if necessary, uh, when you don't have time to do it, um, and also with making an overall plan, taking basically what you have done, Josh, and make it as applicable as possible to open source technology. Um, so my suggestion is that we meet 
next Tuesday, uh, all of us, the, the three of us, uh, and make a like minimal viable marketing execution place, basically. Plan. Um, yeah, so the and stuff like that. yeah, some priority points. Right. So, in summary, the highest things that emerge are okay. So possibly for Eric on the on the, some of the content generation. I, I mean, I can Eric, I can feed you some ideas because I mean, I kind of have the knowledge of what all exists out there. So maybe I can yeah, feed you some of that. Step on toes and make it my <laughs> Yeah. Um, from Joe's side, what? What do you sorry Joe so so your number one if you were to pick one thing so the number one thing is getting our name out to other groups and interesting parties leveraging what we already have created and immediately start finding other places where we can draw attention with it or draw attention to it podcast maybe like a very specific we already have some podcast list on the the 180 DC document but maybe like hey let's just get those rolling out right now like if we present a pitch to them and let's just i mean i can do that anytime pretty much so that's low cost on my side and that definitely reaches out to you mentioned the key point there's external audiences we don't want to be talking to ourselves let's let's expand that um so maybe like just start generating a list a very explicit list uh there and there are keywords in a 180 dc report and you're kind of familiar with some keywords there that we can use to as far as uh, refining the report and maybe getting very specific like getting a nice exhaustive list which like from the report we don't have any th- there's some some decent lists in there but i think we can go a little deeper into okay what are all the you know just really make that yeah. exhaustive an exhaustive search yeah i think my kind of last two minutes here i think we're probably three quarters through the conceptual development of all this i think a lot of it is just hurting the cats like doing the brute work, getting everyone connected. So, final two things. Is there an OBS but for podcasts? Because I know there's Apple, there's Spotify, there's um, SoundCloud. Do we have to individually do that brute force, or is there like an OBS where it's one software? OBS would be the software if we wanted. Oh, you can do that for audio too? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay, and then final note is everyone on either the Slack or Discord, will you be able to use it for me yelling random questions about is this a good design of graphic A, is this a good video B? Because I kind of need that that. real-time feedback for a lot of these edits because I can't have hour latency of if an edit's good or not if I want to be efficient. It's not a huge need because time's valuable and all that, but it's just, it just would be helpful that everyone's in the real-time chat. I don't mean to hype it too much, but yeah, that's my bit. So I guess we can get end on that. Um, yeah. And um, just one more note about, so part regarding partnerships, um, what's, the, what's the final word on, on partnerships? Like, because partnerships seem to be I mean that that applies to all kinds of organizations, including universities. But what's the what's the summary on um, like if we can re- just review partnerships for a second, Josh? Maybe. Yeah, the partnerships entire branch kind of consists of like a bunch of different stuff. There's like the colleges, which is you said you want to get into, just like guest appearances, speaking engagements, starting of clubs. There's like the high schools and post secondary schools, which also like can bring in a lot of participants for the steam camps. And then there's also just like non like educational partnerships, which is more like toward other open source companies, which I think Eric was talking about the, uh, the precious plastic. So companies like that is kind of like an open source partnership. And then other Definitely. just like non profits that we think could fit. So if we could get that motor done, it would be exploding and we would be more intermeshed. And the more we intermeshed, the more devs we have, because our limit is just devs and money. So if we solve that, we have like paradise. <laughs> okay, so um, so Andreas, what's the next step? Yeah. Um. So let me book in everyone. Or no, yeah, Josh, go uh, if you're available, and you can look through. Actually, you don't need to look through it. So Joe, you have seen the uh, 180 degree consultant marketing part, I guess. Um. 
So if we meet up on, on Tuesday and put something together, and then we can send it over to Mars and watch it. I don't know if we want to be there or not, but if we like, these are the steps we want to take, and then you can give us a go or not to actually do it. Yeah. Um, let's yeah, let's do it. Um, so let's do that. Um, and also, it's good to know what for that meeting and what people can focus on that we got from for the ones who want to be there. We got from Eric that you can help with editing with the video and um, audio, and uh, yeah. Martin who said that you can help. Uh, on the note of who does what, 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 what did you say, Martian? Uh, uh, for me, I can start? I can feed some, like as far as idea, like basically yeah, video treatments or concepts for quick no, things that we can point. start throwing up into our social media and getting that presence being excited. Because I mean, I, I can tell you right now, we have a lot of exciting stuff, yeah. but you need to put a narrative to all of that. But we can meet like so yeah. many different narratives across the field. I think I, I yeah, can so do I, I mean, a decent yeah, job um, on that. Can you maybe make like top three uh, narratives that you have or something like yeah. that? Yeah, I think we're kind of good on the right now. Uh, yeah, sure. or whenever you have time before. But, uh, I made <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do that. Great. On Thanks. the Discord and stuff for when we're not doing huge three-hour talks like this, I made a marketing channel so. I can post a picture, everyone can chime in, oh, that's ugly, or oh, that's great, or oh, how about you change that letter to be bigger. I did a similar thing for a local animal shelter, and the feedback is really deep. So if you could just get in the real-time chat, and Martian starts churning out like, pictures and video, or I dig for the other ones for the source files, I think we're cool. Uh, yeah. Eric, are you on um, on Facebook? Um, I don't have Facebook, I have... Discord, I have Gmail, I have... Are you opposed to getting Facebook, or...? No, I'm not opposed, to just be making it so I can do that. Well, because there's the OC Workshops Facebook page where we can actually make that more dynamic. Or, or, or the um, new Gmail account, I could use that. And then, where you said the source files were on a wiki page. I can I send you... Yeah. A deliverable. I could move that to a Google Doc as well as... Oh, funny thing, we can kind of cheat and use Google Docs as free cloud backup to a certain degree. I was plotting this for personal photos the other day, and it's slightly morally sketchy, but up to a certain amount of gigabytes, it's free, so you can kind of cheat that. But yep, yep, I yep. think a Google, a Google Docs group consensus on what the aesthetic is, and then me diving into that, making the videos with help and whatnot, is I think kind of the deliverable and TLDR we came up with is that like, consensus. Okay, so it's been about one hour, so if anyone needs to drop off, um, can do that, of course. I, I have, let me add my notes. It's not very extensive, but um, yep. a little bit, but nothing. Um, and before we go, so Martin, your view of this free weekend concept of a workshop, and everyone else, Josh, you know, uh, so basically you, the first weekend, free printer, and print some PP second week and do no filament maker and that shredder. Um, you're saying we should do that? We should we should go with that? That's my suggestion, so I wonder about your your guys uh, yours your opinion. I love yeah. that idea. Yeah. Joe, why do you love that idea? Because again it's easier it's making it easier to folks for folks to join in. If we did something like that and live streamed various parts of it as it came together and broadcast that out on our social media, having it on the weekends like that, three consecutive weekends, gives a much broader audience time to tune in. And then if that's all recorded and then uploaded on a separate playlist on the YouTube channel we're going to build so that people can start getting a feel for the culture of what it's like to do this, they can start imagining themselves going to a steam camp, that that's going to build up. That's going to build up our traction quite a bit, and I think that format. I think that format's a really good way to approach it. Okay. A great off-the-shelf example of exactly that was I think it was Thomas Salander. They made a build of the tool changer printer, and they filmed every single aspect from unpacking to final tuning. It was like a ten-hour video series, but it was they had piles of cameras for every perspective, so from sideways on the desk, overhead camera, head camera with like a GoPro. Yeah. And I was mm. I was plotting an overhead camera, 
So, Arjun, if you have an old USB webcam, you can put it on the pre-printed aluminum extrusion overhead. And then if you get a GoPro, you can basically start streaming. So you make the video for I can do all the complicated brute force work, and we should be good with that. Even something yeah. as simple as taking part and putting it back together a D3D to show how quick it is, I think that would be great. Yeah, a lot of things we can do. Um, so... I'd, I'd say yeah yeah I'd, I'm open to that like the three weekends that could be cool and what do, what are your thoughts on within that week because because I was thinking okay we might want to do some other design lessons like throughout the week like what if it, what if there's some other content throughout the week like say design guides and teaching about design of other things yeah so I think we have to like um, be a bit careful so we don't put in too much work during the week because people might actually have a other works and in family things like that. But what I, I was thinking was to have an exercise from one weekend to next weekend, mm -hmm. which is in preparation for the next weekend. So, for example, the exercise from the first weekend to the second one would be to print parts for the uh, uh, filament yeah. or for the extruder. Yeah. So, in this way, they, they get to actually use their 3D printer and then they can help each other on Slack or Discord or whatever we choose to use. Uh, so, something quite low but they still need to finish it in order to do the next one um yeah that was my thinking yeah yeah i think that's that's a good that's a good deal yeah i saw i saw on the wiki that we had a discord that we've used in the past do we have any real-time chat system that people working on osc projects have in common right now yeah, it seems like we have two now, Slack and Discord. Um, we need to converge on one eventually, but uh, for now we I have think two. I have the links posted. Can, can all of you check that individually just to make sure I didn't break the link? Because the search engine isn't the best at times. I try to make redirects, but it's beyond. So I think maybe it's the last thing before we close, as I don't want to be speaking for everyone, but I think we kind of have consensus. So just make sure everyone can get into the real-time chat, and then we close so people can go back to okay. the work. And then real-time chat for anything else that's needed, maybe? Uh, what do you think of that? Yep, sounds good. So, um, that sounds good. So, Andres, so then you'll meet on Tuesday with the marketing meeting, and, and then that'll be our next step, yeah? Um, yeah, uh, I was thinking Josh, Joe, and, and me, but you can come up also if you have time on, on Tuesday, then all of us. Uh, basically. Okay. Do you want to come, Martin? Because I was thinking, like, looking through and um, condensing the plan that yeah. they made. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we can really so say, okay, these are some of the things we're really committing to just nailing, you know, kind of like yeah, exactly. distilling I that plan into executable, just what we can so do right now. So do you now. want to see the end result to be part of the process? Yeah. Yeah, I can be the part of the process. Yeah, okay. Then Should I, I be there, there or is that right. overreaching and dunning Krugering? Especially if I start video editing. I don't want to be out of the loop, but I don't want to be stepping on toes. Where's the balance? Yeah, yeah no, of course. It, it would be weird if, if you're not uh, there. And All right. Make that so I've sent a general invite uh, to people. Okay. So let's right. uh, call it until Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, are you available at the same time? Yeah, what's the UTC for the meeting? The time code? So 2 p.m. CST. Okay, Same I'll, today. I'll write that down on a wiki page somewhere, and I think we can close on that. Yeah, all right. So, thanks, everyone. Okay, so until yeah. until Tuesday then, yeah? Okay. Okay, bye -bye. thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Bye. Take care, bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, guys.